Welcome back. Today, I'm going to take you through the Dynamics 365 Business Central Admin Center. What is it? How do I access it? And what can I do with it? All right, let's get started. I'm here in a company called Training, and it is just a copy of Kronos. We're within the Learn BC Microsoft Tenant, and we're going to use this for our example today just to uh, emulate as much as possible an experience that you would have with your own environment. So from here, if I want to access the admin center, I have to have one of two things. I have to be a one, a global administrator, or two, I have to be a Dynamics 365 administrator. Let's take a look at how we can see that. Within the admin center, uh, Microsoft 365 Admin Center, I can see role assignments. And from here, I can search global. And there is a role called the global administrator. So this would either be allocated or you can be a Dynamics, Dynamics 365 Administrator. Now, while we're in the Admin Center, we want to have a look at something else that's super important for this example today. We're going to look at our domains. And this will show us our on Microsoft domain. So just take a look at this r365ready.onmicrosoft.com. When your tenant was set up with Microsoft or via your partner, um, this would have been provisioned an on Microsoft tenant domain. Uh, so this is standard across all Microsoft tenancies. So just be aware of that. Let's go back to Business Central now and let's try and uh, describe how to get into the admin center. There is uh, a couple of different ways. Number one, on your in your URL to access Business Central, you'll see here your businesscentral.dynamics.com or it will be your ISV domain forward slash your tenant ID. And then after this, you can either put admin. We'll do that here. On hitting admin, you'll get access to the admin center. That is one way we can get into the admin center. Let's go back. The second way we can access this, pressing the cog, and we're gonna hit Admin Center. And there we are, and it will pop up in front of us. Okay, the third way, if you're not sure what your tenant ID is, you can actually turn around and type in your, your tenant ID here, your on Microsoft tenant ID, forward slash admin. That's a third way you can get access. Now, the most common is just using your tenant ID. So the next question people ask is, well, I don't know where to get that from. How do I get that? So let's go to help, question mark, help and support. And on help and support, down under report a problem, you're gonna see your Azure AD tenant ID. This is your global unique tenant ID. That is your company. Now the company itself that you work for, it's, it's Microsoft identification number. And it is used by Microsoft to identify your environment. Okay. So just there, that, that's how we get into the admin center. Let's now pop over to the admin center and take a look at what is in there. First up here, you get to see environments. It's the first thing that loads as you load into the admin center. Now, as a rule, generally speaking, you can only have one production environment and three sandboxes. That's based off standard licensing. We do, however, have clients that have multiple production environments and multiple, many more sandboxes because they're international or they have um, different licensing with Microsoft. 99% of all of our customers, however, only have up to four environments, one production, three sandboxes. All right, what's production? Production is the environment where you work in day to day. This is your accounting system. This is your production, live, um, high risk, don't touch it without thinking about an environment. Okay. So therefore, Microsoft gives us the freedom to have sandboxes and a sandbox is effectively a playpen, a safe place for you to copy your production to or to create a new sandbox to try something new. In a sandbox, you can... Your development team can do a per tenant extension into a sandbox. They can load external marketplace extensions. You can test, you can try. You can even delay upgrading your production environment version 
and then copy your production to a sandbox, push that upgrade, test your upgrade, make sure everything's working fine before pushing forwards with your production upgrade. So sandboxing is quite critical for a healthy BC tenant. And for those who are the internal champions, you should know that this is something that you'll need to be across, you need to be able to get access to so you can administrate it. Within an environment, we've got a couple of things we can do. Um, first and foremost, I could create a new environment, which would be clean. And when it comes in clean, it comes in clean with Kronos only and my company. So all I've done is I've hit here, new, and in a second, it will appear over here on the right. Here we are, and we can type test. I can only have one production environment. I can change that to a sandbox. The country, AU. And which version do we want? And from there, I can create a new environment, clean. The alternative way to creating an environment, which is what we do the majority of time, is we go into production. We click copy. From this copy, we give it a name. We change it from production to sandbox and press copy. This allows our developers or a third party to get access to an environment that can be used for testing. We can lock out external contractors from getting access to production, but give them access to a sandbox. Um, yeah, so it's, it's quite useful what you can do with this. In here within the environment, we can see the name and its family, country, region, and the type. The application insights is to do with extending telemetry. Security group allows you to define security access control using Azure AD and then access with Microsoft 365 licenses it enables users within your 365 tenancy that are not licensed for BC to access certain data from BC. You've got the URL and then you can see your version control here. So this, this is to do with batching and, and controlling your upgrade path. Up the top here, this can be useful for an admin, is the apps. So from this apps, I've got the ability to go and push updates into my tenancy for third-party extensions that I've installed. As you can see here, I've got a list of uh, applications that are installed by default. As I scroll down, I can see I have an extension that's installed. There's an upgrade available and I can push install. Do I wish to install it? Yes. And that allows me from the admin center to manage the up upgrade for all of my companies within one production environment. Back within the database, I can manage sessions. So here I'll see who's currently logged on. I can cancel and remove somebody from a particular environment from a session. I can also turn around and restart the environment from the sessions. So from time to time, if there's a problem with the environment, something's not working right, it is very rare, okay? But it does happen where your consultant will tell you you need to restart your environment. Just here hitting restart will handle that for you. We have our database where we can create an export, view export history. This export allows us to effectively export the environment into an Azure data structure, which is like a blob. Support tickets and managing support with Microsoft, managing your updates, again, the basics of copy, restore, uh, rename, delete, refresh. All right, so that's your environments. From here, we've also got your notifications. So from notifications, we can set up recipients to get emails, notifications on key things to do with Business Central um, administration, and so you'll get updates that uh, the BC environment was upgraded or that an update failed due to an extension or that you've got a space issue. So these notifications are quite important. Authorize Active Directory application. So here's the thing, I, I don't have any in this demo environment, but if you're installing um, applications, third-party warehouse management systems, integrations, etc., you're going to find that they will have to be an authorized Microsoft as a, a application. So long gone is the day where you could just go into a third party application and give it a global admin user account. Microsoft has banned that. 
the idea is that you give them delegation through an authorization of an app to purely access what they need to access. And it's, it's all part of Microsoft's security matrix of, of continuing to enhance uh, their customers' security policies and procedures. So authorize IAD apps just really helps you there. Telemetry is just letting you know what's going on with the environment, things that are, are loading slow, performing poorly that you may want to watch. As you saw back in the environment, you can monitor, monitor more advanced telemetry than this. Reported outages just comes through to what outages have happened on this environment. We've got nothing, so that's pretty good. Operations is going to show us key operations that have happened, even as, 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 as close as today. So when I run that filter today, I turned around and deleted an environment and I copied an environment. So you can see here just a log of what, what had happened. And the last thing here is your capacity. So within capacity, it's going to show us how much storage we have. Now, I know it says here user licenses three. The reality is I only have one license with storage. And so you get three gigs per user and 80 gigs per tenant. Because I've got one licensed user plus 80 gigs, it gives me a total of 83 gigs. So if you've got 50 staff, you'll have 150 gigs plus 80, bringing you up to 230. Pretty cool. So that's how your storage works with your quota. Now your quota is consumed not only from the single production environment, but also the sandboxes as well. Now if your environment gets large, what we see happen commonly is a customer will grow their database to be 30, 40 gigabytes. They don't think about it and then they copy that three times and it blows their storage limit with Microsoft. So that really wraps up the, the uh, Dynamics 365 Business Central Admin Center tutorial. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to send us a message, um, reach out, and we're happy to, to, to give you further dialogue and training and record further videos that may be of use. But the key things here, as we've said, your limited environments, keep it clean. Um, you know, one of the common things, just adding on here, um, if you've got lots of sandboxes, if you don't need them, delete them. And the other thing that you see a lot of is that customers will spin up copies and copies and copies of companies. So here's an example here where I've got Kronos, Demo, My Company, Shopify Training. And in the demo environment, I've got the same thing. So if I have backup, 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 backup. So if you're taking backup copies of your company as a, as a company copy and you end up with 20, 30 of those, you do that and when you're replicating your sandbox environments, you're going to find that from a storage capacity perspective, you blow your limits very quickly versus you may actually be very low at 20, 10, 20% of your total capacity by the time you get rid of all of the, um, the excess storage. Well, that's it. Have a great day. Thank you for your time.